Hey, welcome. It's Brian, and today we are going to start a new series of videos that I'm calling Guitar on Record, and that's where I pick my top five recordings by a certain guitar player, and we kind of talk about it. The only stipulation is I actually have to have a physical copy of the recording, so that kind of forces my hand sometimes because I don't always have my favorite recordings anymore. I haven't had a CD player for probably four or five years, unfortunately, so some of the stuff has been kind of lost or sold or whatever. So uh, today we are going to start off on the right note, and that is with one of my favorite guitar players of all time, and that is Robert Fripp. So I picked five plus two honorable mentions, and of course there's many, many, many more. And so the first one is in... The Wake of Poseidon by King Crimson. Greg Lake sings on it. Uh, I love this record. I love this record more than in the Court of the Crimson King. Just lots of cool ballads on it. Uh, Cat Food's kind of the exception, kind of a funny, quirky song, but never my favorite. But, uh, you know, Pictures of the City, uh, a beginning piece, a beginning. There's these kind of cool little guitar silhouettes and stuff like that in it that I really, really like. Um, just a great record and Greg Lake at his best in my opinion and the songs were a little more concise than uh, in the Court of the Crimson King and a little weirder too so I just think this is in the Court of the Crimson King but slightly more refined and I really 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 love this one so definitely my top five of course uh, I this record, Discipline, came out when I was about 14, and I kind of got to see King Crimson. They did a lot of TV uh, shows. One was called Fridays, I believe, uh, and then there might have been a couple others. And on Fridays, they did Elephant Talk, I believe, and that just kind of blew my mind. And that started me down the path of Robert Fripp. I had kind of liked Fusion before this, but not by much. I was still listening to kind of new wave of British metal, stuff like that, got into guitar playing and fusion, and then this kind of all coalesced at the same time, and just seeing King Crimson on TV with Adrian Ballou as that really charismatic singer and guitar player, and of course Robert Fripp and Bruford and everyone, um, such a cool thing. So uh, I, you have to have this record if you love uh, King Crimson, for sure, So and Robert Fripp. Uh, the next one, this came out around 1980. I got it probably maybe a decade later maybe, or so, you know, probably in the mid or to late 80s. And it's probably one of my favorite Robert Fripp records uh, that had the most influence on me. So he's doing Frippertronics, loops, little guitar solos, just a beautiful record. Uh, it really shaped my personal guitar playing um, a lot. So, you know. Um, I love this record and I'll always talk about it so definitely in my top five next up we have Starless and Bible Black a record that features John Wenton on bass and vocals David Cross on violin of course the incredible Bill Bruford on drums and Robert of course uh, I like this record because it's sandwiched in between Lark's Tongues and Aspic and Red I think Lark's was kind of close to that it had Jamie Muir like I said on percussion it had a, like some kind of more improvisational elements to it but these have pieces on it that are really interesting dynamic and deep and uh, I just think they kind of came into their own on this record this version of the band um, and then I believe Red I really really like but that seems more of like a safer studio uh, recording uh, amazing songs on it I still love it but there's just something about this record that's kind of more visceral, more um, kind of on the edge, and just there's just something really cool about it uh, as a piece of music, as a whole piece of music, as songs go, all of that. So um, obviously The Great Deceiver, Lament, uh, Starless and Bible Black, and of course it features Fracture. So that's an iconic you know, piece of music from this period of Robert's career. Uh, I love that record. Next up, and this is five, would be the League of Crafty Guitar Players. This came out, I'm not sure, actually. I'd have to look. Uh, this is live. I happen to see this tour, and it was really, really uh, impactful. 
So I think I wouldn't have seen this actually when the record came out because I believe it's mid 80s that it came out. Um, yeah, 86. And I think I, I saw it in the 90s because I saw it in Seattle. So I'm not sure what tour that was. But anyway, super, super cool stuff. I love this recording. So uh, there's not too many guitar pieces or you know assemblage of pieces that are that interesting to me there's definitely some out there but because i love robert so much it was such a cool fit and really you know eye-opening or whatever uh the next these are honorable mentions and this is uh sunday all over the world they did one record it's with toya singing paul beavis on drums and i believe trey uh playing bass trey gun playing bass and um you know something else like the chapman stick uh, or the war guitar or something like that it's a really cool record and unfortunately it didn't go anywhere um, but i've always liked it and held on to it since it came out and uh robert has done lots of side work with lots of players but this one with david sylvia and it's live is just really really cool great songs i'm not necessarily a huge fan of david sylvia by himself but uh Robert did a few records, like actual recordings. I think the one is The Next Day. I believe that's what it's called. And then they did this live recording, which is a culmination of, I think, that record and maybe one other. So I love this record as well. So those are my top five quintessential Robert Fripp records with the two editions as like an honorable mention. And again, uh, if you like this kind of thing, please like, subscribe, and comment. Kind of throw your favorite Fripp records in. I have many. These are the top five that I own. Like I said at the beginning, that's the stipulation is I actually, actually have to have a physical copy of it. So um, I hope you join me for the next one. We'll be doing one of these every week or so. Uh, you can suggest one if you like. And maybe I have stuff. I have to say that uh, just basically narrowing down my CD collection over the years from a couple of thousand to about a thousand. I'm pretty limited in it, so I don't know how many of these I'll actually make, but uh, it's going to be fun doing it. So please come back. All right. Bye.